Okay, so everybody ready for our next talk? So we have here with us uh, John M. Shea, 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 yeah? And he's going to talk about tools for interactive education, experience in Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Books. All right, thank you very much. Um, I, I want to tell you a little bit about what I've been working on, uh, some libraries I've developed, and my thoughts about what I would like, uh, what I'm thinking, uh, what we need to develop as a community in terms of educational experiences for students. So I have been using Jupyter and IPython before in my teaching at the University of Florida for uh, over a dozen years now, and so I have some thoughts about this. Uh, all my slides and everything is linked here. I am going to do live demos, so if you want to follow along, you can pip install when we get to that stuff and uh, try to show you some of the things that I, I'm working on. Um, so, I mean, one of the things I, I want to tell you is that, you know, there, if you look at the pedagogical literature, there are really two things that repeatedly show up as actually being practically effective in, in terms of retaining students' learning, improving students' learning. And, and the first of those is sort of, you know, the, the bicycle model of learning, which is not how our classes usually work. In, in the bicycle model, you just keep doing the thing until you learn how to do it, right? And if you didn't do it right, then uh, somebody helps guide you and give you some feedback, and then you keep trying, and then you do it. And so uh, this is called low-stakes testing, or, or um, sometimes called formative assessment, and basically means that you are allowed to uh, continually try something, and there's no penalty for trying that. Uh, unlike conventional courses, you just go along, you do your work, and then you take a big test, and either you pass or fail. Um, uh, so, uh, I think this is important to try to incorporate into our learning experiences for students. Um, an important part here is uh, not only repeatedly, but ability to provide feedback, and I think a lot of our tools fail to do that, and I'll show you how I've done that in some uh, tool that I've built. Another uh, important uh, uh, method from the pedagogical, pedagogical literature is spaced repetition, which is basically, um, if you've seen Anki, for instance, probably many Anki users, where uh, you have flashcards that will show you the flashcards again and again, and then over time, it will show you them at different spacings. You can set up some of these tools to do these things, and that's been shown to retain learning a lot, and so ways to incorporate these things where you don't just see information once. Again, many of our classes tend to do this. You sh we sh teach you something, and then you're expected to know it forever after I show you that. Okay? So how can we, how can we, you know, break this model as well? Um, and then from the Jupyter ecosystem, if I look at what is there and what is not there, uh, what's wonderful is there's just so many things that fuse all of these different modalities of uh, explanatory and computational, visual. Um, you know, we even have uh, widgets where you can have interactivity with computational elements. We have DB now where you can have live code that you can interact with within even an HTML such as Jupyter Books, which I'm interested in. So we have all these wonderful things. But for students, we don't just need this. For learners in general, we need uh, not only the things where I am delivering information to you, but we need things where I am giving you an opportunity to test your own learning or review the learning that you have gone through. So um, this is where I am coming from. Um, and then on top of this, I looked at, oh, right, well, I'm writing a book, and I have my book, it's out on the web, uh, and uh, I want to say, well, how can I incorporate all sorts of things like this to achieve these goals? And a lot of things didn't achieve the goals. For instance, I didn't have some natural way to integrate with Jupyter or particularly Jupyter books. Um, you had locked users into particular ecosystems, didn't support either code or LaTeX, which is important to me because I teach mathematical courses um, or images or, you know, I want to put lots of different things into my uh, educational material. And I can style things. I'll show you some examples about things like that. And most of them require some server and wouldn't work in an offline mode. And to me, it's important that students be able to take something and it continue to work whether they're connected or not connected. Uh, so 
some issues with existing tools. So here are some flashcard tools that are popular on the web. I won't name them, but uh, if those equations look good to you, then OK. Uh, <laughs> This thing is, has some interesting ideas. I, I might do something like this with some of my tools, but still attractive, I don't know. Or here's another one. Uh, they have some animation, so it's OK. Um, but you know, things could be better. Um, another thing is, so these were flashcard tools. Here's quiz tools. So this is one that I really like, actually, and use in some, some of my classes. It's called Learning Catalytics. But again, this is more for summative assessment, uh, assessment where um, you are assigning a score and telling people you're right or you're wrong. Now, this one does have some nice features where, OK, I give a, a question to students, and then it, they, I find out they didn't know how to do it. And then I can hit a group feature, and I'll group students together in groups, and they can work on it and try to you know, pair up students who got it and didn't get it and help them come to understand better. And that works nicely, but um, it's not exactly what I was looking for. So I'm going to introduce you to two libraries that uh, I, I think could be useful to you if you're interested in education. Um, I have them in my book that's linked in the, uh, if you follow the little um, QR code at the beginning. Um, but just type pip install Jupyter Cards or go to jupytercards.org if you want to see more about it. It's on GitHub. It's just a GitHub redirect. Um, and so what this is is a library for doing interactive flashcards. I'm showing this one first because it's the easier of the two to, to work with and show you a little bit about. Um, you call it from Python, and then behind the scenes, it does everything in JavaScript. So that uh, the purpose for that is that I want it to work within Jupyter Book in the end, so that if you've written something and then publishing it to the web, it will work. Okay, so it doesn't have to have Python, PyScript, something like that. Um, making cards, I'll show you, is quite easy. Um, they can be lists of dicts, they can be JSONs, they can be markdowns, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do it. They can be on the web. If you put them on the web, it can down it'll download it for you and keep it a local copy in your uh, HTML file, so it doesn't have to have that connectivity. And uh, so the gist is, okay, every card is a Python dictionary, has a front and a back, and that's it. <laughs> so uh, let's try it here. Um, also, I just want to, before I do that, I want to show you one thing that I've been enjoying connections at the, at the, um, at the conference so far. This is my first JupyterCon. Uh, this is the EPFL page, and then I just love that it says, the P Python library Jupyter Quest by John Shea also allows you to create multiple choice questions. So the last presenter's uh, web pages refer to this library. So that's one of my libraries, so that's kind of a fun thing. Um, so let's go here. And so if you've installed uh, Jupyter Cards, then first the way I would usually do it is just say from Jupyter Cards, import, uh, display flashcards, like that. And then I'm going to make a flashcard. And so I'll just make one flashcard first. Um, this expects lists of, of flashcards. So I'm going to make a list. Um, uh, but it's only going to have one thing in it. So we'll start a list. And then I'll start a dictionary. And in the dictionary, it'll have a front. And in the front, I'll say maybe Jupyter Quiz, uh, Jupyter Cards, because we're doing Jupyter Cards first. OK, like that. And it needs a back. So I'll make a back. And I'll say um, it's an interactive library for animated flashcards. OK, and something like this. Just try to make it look decent there. And then if we want to actually call it, then we just call display flashcards, pass it our flashcards, and we get this thing. OK? And so. You know, you click it, it looks nice, you know. It, it's kind of fun for students to use, I think. Um, you know, the styling is, well, this is colors that go with my book, but what if we wanted to have colors that match with JupyterCon? So uh, we could kind of add some little, if we look at here in the tooltips, front colors, back colors. Uh, so I'll say the front colors are JupyterCon, and the back colors also JupyterCon. Normally, you would pass a list of HTML colors, you know, friendly colors. But these are colors from the JupyterCon website now, so now we're styled appropriately. Uh, I've just put that in for, th for this uh, 
uh, conference, but it's in, it's in the GitHub, so you could do that. It's kind of fun. Um, if we want to add another card, uh, then let's just copy our other block here. Um, I'll just copy this whole thing like this. Then, yeah, just add another list, another dictionary to this, okay? Uh, I'll just copy the front and back stuff because I'm lazy. So I'm going to introduce you to another library called Jupyter Quiz in a little bit, so I'll just say that. And it is for quizzes, so I will be careful and fix that missing <laughs> uh, quote there. And then if we display it, again, I'm going to be a little bit lazy and copy that thing up here where I just display this. Uh, we should call this one FC2, just to be careful. Uh. Okay, and so if you have multiple flashcards, uh, you can also have uh, keyboard controls. So there I just use my uh, space bar to flip, my keyboard to advance. Uh, if you're on mobile, you can just swipe it. Okay, so it has nice things for people who are doing it. It uh, will adapt to the size of your screen. You know, it does all these things. So you can use it on your phone, you can use it on your iPad, you can use it on wherever you are. So uh, hopefully that is a, a useful tool. Um, another thing that's important to me is that you can have mathematics in your card. So I'm going to grab an e the, the first card up here and just add some LaTeX to it. I don't know if we have LaTeX users here, but uh, if you're doing this, of course, it supports all the MathJack stuff. Uh, so if we say Fourier transform, and then here, uh, if I can type this thing, int uh, minus x less empty to empty. Um, Okay, and I'm going to call this one FC3, actually. And let me copy this line again. Uh, what, I had the dollar signs, right? There you go. All right, and so you have pretty math, right? So these are things that are nice, and you know, hopefully it will be useful to you. And so this is partly an ad, I have to admit, <laughs> that I want people to use this, I want the people to contribute this, and so... Uh, this this is uh, Jupiter cards. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, my other library here. Uh, let's see where it is here. Dun, dun. Uh, here we go. So the other library is called Jupiter Quiz, and it is for interactive quizzes. Um, here I'm showing sort of a I forget what these diagrams are called, that, that shows the, the how, how you design the, the quiz with the schema, um, what is support and, and such, and then I'm going to show you how to actually build a Jupyter quiz live. Again, it's very easy here. I'm doing them all in Python. I think it's nice to build them in the Python using lists and dicts and things like that, and then you can just uh, dump them to JSON, because I find JSON harder to do. You have to escape all the backslashes and stuff like that, so if you write it in Python and dump it to JSON, it's much easier. Um, one of the things I think that uh, can be done is there, there can be better tools. There is a tool out there for designing the Jupyter quizzes already that uh, is a contribution from the community, so that's also available on the Jupyter Qu quiz uh, website. Um, again, uh, did I put it here? Oops, sorry, wrong way. Yeah, so pip installed uh, Jupyter quiz. Where did I go wrong? Uh, Jupyter quiz. Yeah. Hopefully it's there. Oh, it is there. Yeah, so pip install Jupyter Quiz. Both of these are less than around one meg. Jupyter Quiz is a little bit bigger than Jupyter Cards. So uh, take a look. Um, let's just show how this works in practice. Okay. Uh, so first, I'm just going to zoom in and do part of it, you know, build part of this out at a time. It would be a little bit easier for us. Uh, I'm going to not do it within a list. Uh, we will need a list in the end, but just because there's so many layers if we do that. So uh, again, a single question will basically be a dictionary object. So I'm just going to start by making a blank dictionary and then add the parts to it. So uh, say I want to add the question part. This is the text of the question. Uh, I will say, say, uh, what is the output? And everybody's seen this example 100 times, but uh, because it is so popular, uh, and just gives people an idea of what could be going on here. 
What's the output of the following Python code? I need to tell it what type of question it is. Uh, so I have a type uh, field here. And so the type, I'm just going to make multiple choice. It supports, oops, can't spell, uh, supports numeric questions, multiple choice questions, or many choice questions. And this one has code in it, so I'm going to add the code. Uh, and the code, uh, you, you have some limitations on what you can do with the code, but I'm going to do it like this with uh, triple quoting a equals one, back to sin. Uh, oops, I want that to be equals. B equals one. And uh, I want quotes, sorry. I want to turn these into strings and say print uh, A plus B. Hopefully I did all that right. I'll try it. OK. Um, so, oh, I didn't import this. I'm not reading my own notes. <laughs> Let me move this here. Uh, so I need to import from Jupyter Quiz, import display. Quiz, like that. Ah, Jupyter quiz. Danger of trying to do all these li live typing. Uh, and then just do display quiz. And this will not entirely work yet because I don't have any answers, but it will give you a gist of what's going on here. Uh, I need to put this in, in brackets because, again, it is expecting a list or something like that. Um, here you can see the, how it starts to format the code and things like that. It's not quite ready, but um, this is how it's going to start to look. It'll look much better when we get some answers in there. Uh, so here's the answers. The answers is an array of objects. Each of those uh, answers is a dictionary. We're going to start with the simplest version where we just have uh, some answer string and an indication whether it's correct. And I'm just going to put uh, two answers in for this one. And so again, I'm just going to uh, do this like this. Uh, so our Q1 of answers. I need to make sure I follow my notes here so I don't mess up too bad. Uh, so it is an array, so in, in Python a list. Uh, um, and so uh, we need to tell it for each of the answers in our list, there'll be a dictionary. And we'll have an answer text, which is going to be uh, typically like a string like this. And then it will have a correct field, uh, which uh, here we know that this one is false because uh, that's string concatenation. Um, so uh, then we have another answer field down here. And that's one, two, and that one is actually the correct one, so that is true. And if I did all that correct, hopefully that will work. I'm going to go up here and copy this block. All right. And if we did everything right, it should work like this. You say, oh, oops, I have one plus one. I should have said one plus two. Let me change that to one plus two so it'll fit with my description here. One plus two. All right, make sure that's working here. It's working here. OK. Oops, what did I do? Ah, I wiped out the, the answers. OK. So I say oh, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. No, that's not right, of course. But 1 plus 2 and strings is 12 because string concatenation. Um, but you know, this is OK. It works, right? And it has some feedback, and or it tells you you're right or wrong. But it's not really what I was going for. And so uh, let me just jump back to my slides for a second and remind you what I was interested in is that we here you can click around. You have multiple choice. You can just click until you get all the answers, right? And if, if there's just one answer, you just click, click, click. You figure out everything. But you might not get any insight about why that was the answer. You might not get any insight about why you were wrong. Uh, one of the things I really wanted to do is that this is, again, a low stakes assessment thing. It's not something to get scores. It's something for you to, to, to try to learn. So I wanted to provide feedback to guide the learner to the right solution. So let's go back. And so here's my little turbo turbocharger diagram, if you understand a little thing about how turbochargers on an engine feed back and reinforce and give extra power from an engine. This is what I was thinking with this. So let's add feedback to our previous question. Um, and so uh, to do that, all we have to do is I'm going to copy this whole answer block again, because it'll be easier for me uh, to just add like this. We're going to go in here, 
And I'm just going to add feedback for one of these, which is, is this one, uh, where, OK, obviously, 3 is not right, because students might think they see 1 and 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Uh, but you want to tell them that, no, you know, we've already reviewed earlier that Python is trying to do the right thing. And so when Python sees two strings, uh, then we want to remind them, recall that for strings, the plus operator is concatenation. All right? And so we can just give them this little feedback. And uh, then when we display our quiz again, and I put it in the wrong block again. <laughs> Now when we see this and they click three, they're like, oh, now I should remember why that wasn't the right answer. And now I can think about you know, what the right answer is, because now I know that plus is for string concatenation. So one, one plus two, string of one plus string of two must be one, two. So I get one, two. And then they get it right, right? So having that feedback uh, can really guide them to the, to the correct answer. And uh, you, know, you can think about like, what types of mistakes your students are making and, these, and problems. And you can sort of put this in there and say, oh, no, no. You know, you're, it, OK, it's probability. It's a counting problem. I'll show you one in a second. Um, and <coughs> we want them to uh, get knowledge with us having a little guide on the side. Um, I do want to do one numeric question. So again, we have many choice questions. We have numeric questions. Um, I think I can squeeze this in. I know this is all very tight, but I want to just show you as much as I can. Uh, uh, so let's see. We're going to make a question. Um, the question is, um, what is the probability? of getting exactly two heads on three flips of a fair coin. And then uh, the type we have to tell, oops, I didn't put a comma there. The type we have to tell it now that, hey, this is a numeric question. And I'm going to go ahead and put in answers. I'm just going to put in one answer for now. Uh, again, this is uh, going to be a list of answers, so I'm only going to have one. Um, you can put in different types of, of answers for the numeric. You can give them ranges. You can give them specific values, things like this. Uh, we're going to do the simplest thing and say, OK, I, I want them to just, I'm going to tell them the feedback when they get it right, the particular value I'm looking for. Um, and then the value uh, that is correct is 3 eighths for this one. So I'm just going to put it in like this and correct is true, and oh, I dropped this. So I'll put that in, and that, and yeah, OK. There we go. All right, so a lot of stuff. All right, let me grab this thing here. All right, so when you do that, you get a different sort of display. So what's probably going to uh, You could say, OK, uh, that's 3 eighths. Oops, not 33 eighths. It should say, oh, I. The one, the one thing that is a prob problematic here, and I don't know why it's not evaluating. Hmm. I have broken something. <laughs> Let's try that again. No, I don't know what I did. Answers, uh, thank you. I'm sure that's the problem. There we go. Couldn't find the answer. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, put in the wrong thing until it's the wrong thing. Uh, but not only that, but I can pro provide guidance here as well. Uh, so for instance, this is a probability problem. I teach a lot of probability type classes. So I'm just going to, in the interest of time, uh, add a whole block here. Say, oh, uh, well, uh, I have a range of values I want to tell them. Um, if I'm just going to say, if they're you know, somewhat north of 1, to whatever large value, then we're going to say that's false and just remind them that, hey, probabilities are always less than or equal to 1. right? And so we can do things like this, and then they put in some wrong answer because they say, oh, I counted common to torques, and it's three tight ways for this to occur. And they say, no, that's, that's not three. <laughs> and we can provide more specific feedback. OK, um, so let me jump back and, whoops, wrong button. So we did that. Uh, did that. 
Um, all right. So it also supports many choice questions. Uh, it allows random sampling from the question pools. And the way I plan to use this in my book is so, OK, you get all the questions, say, uh, or, or some sample of random questions then in one chapter. The next chapter has a review section for the previous chapters. And the number of questions it uh, selects from the previous chapters sort down and down and down as you go through the book. So you get a little bit of review, you know, more review of the things that you recently saw, and less review of things you saw further back. Um, it helps also keep the review interesting and meaningful. You show uh, the student visits the page of the book. Uh, they get one set of questions, come again, get another set of questions. So they can review things and not always see the same thing. Um, there is an ability to dump out student answers to a string that you can verify. They can send in so you can verify the students are working through the questions. Um, what, what is the future of this? Uh, well. I, th I think there should be easier tools to make some of these things. I'm working on some of that with moving to Markdown versus JSON. Um, I, I add, allowing for personalized questioning is something that will be useful. Uh, providing links to re remedial material, saving progress on local storage. And let me show you another connection here. So this is a tutorial that uh, Jan Hendrik Mueller sent me that sort of sh shows an idea about what could happen is, that, OK, when you answer the question correctly, then more stuff appears below. I almost got this done yesterday while I was sitting <laughs> in sessions trying to work through this. But I didn't quite get my little demo of it actually working with, with uh, Jupyter Quiz. But it's, it's, it's on the way. So we, we can do things like that as well. Um, I will skip the other demo. But basically, this demo, uh, I show how you can um, generate quiz quizzes without doing any of the work yourself, just using ChatGPT. It'll spit out the proper uh, JSON for you, and you can load it again. Um, so you can do all this sort of stuff. You have to be very careful. It doesn't make great questions sometimes. It gives wrong answers sometimes. Just, but it, it it's can accelerate your workflow a little bit. Uh, mostly, I want to say, what, what do you want to see? What other sort of things can we build like this that help students learn? Um, and so thank you. Thank you, John. Do we have questions? So we have a question in the back. Yeah. So the question is that you know I, I'm I'm building this from a book at, and and the questions are stored to a file or what? How am I doing that? And yes, uh, all my questions are just on GitHub. So I just have links to GitHub. When I build the book, it actually pulls the questions and stores them inside the book itself. You know, so that but if uh, it has internet access, it will pull the latest version. But if it doesn't have internet access, it'll use the stored version. Yeah, so the question is, is there a way to store them in your lectures without the students uh, seeing them? You cannot hide them completely. Um, you can put them in the, the source code in two different ways. Uh, and one way is, is there's, you can just, I have a way where you can just hide it. And the other way is you can hide it in base64 encode it. So at least then they have to go through some effort. Again, the intention of this is self-assessment. So I'm not, I don't care if they can see the answers. I want them to get the answers. I don't want them to, if they want to go to all the trouble to do that, OK, do it, whatever. I mean, I want them to learn this stuff. It's, it's not for a summative assessment. OK, yeah, so the question is, yeah, we could potentially integrate this with MB Grader and hide the, the, some things. Absolutely not. So the question is, do the students have to have the libraries installed? They do not. It puts the JavaScript in the notebook or in the uh, HTML. So it's all JavaScript behind the scenes. <laughs> you just need it to grab to generate that JavaScript for you. All right. Okay. Have, have one, more one more question while one we are back. swapping speakers. I think it's one in the back was first. Yeah, so the question was, is there a way to designate which ones they want to review more or know more? And no, not yet. But I think that's a great idea. And I showed the one example where they could rate it sort of one to five in an online tool about how confident they were, and they would recycle it at the right rate. And so yeah, I think that's a great thing. And just figuring out how to make it look nice and integrated, I, I think I would like to do that. Uh, so yeah, I'd appreciate anybody who wants to contribute or has ideas about how to do this, please just uh, yeah, send me an email. T tweet at me. I don't use Twitter as much. I'm on Mastodon. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, pull, get a, give a open an issue or send a pull request. Thank you. Thank you very much, John.